Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Everyday Caddy for the Everyday Guys. So this video we're going to be talking about the Olight PL2RL or affectionately known as the Balder B-A-L-D-R. Don't know where that name came from, it's on the box, I don't get it myself, I'm not trying to figure it out, but it is what it is. So I filmed a really cool range video, it's going to be coming up later on in this video, but first I'm going to take you through the actual light and maybe just explain to you what the difference is between this one and the and the standard PL2. Now this is the PL2 in Desert Tan, but the standard PL2 is pretty much the same thing. So let's get into the finers of the PL2 RL. So guys, the Balder or Balder, I'm just gonna call it the PL RL. So obviously the thing that is uh, the kicker on here is this laser over here. That's the thing everyone's talking about and everyone loves. Now I've seen a few videos, but for some reason, people have forgotten to mention this, and I know it's quite simple, but the way you activate the laser is the same way you activate the flashlight itself with these two paddles on either side. It is ambidextrous. So don't forget that I know someone actually asked me if you activate the laser with a little, with a little switch at the bottom here. That's not how you activate it. You switch it on and off with the normal paddles. Now there are three settings as you just saw. The first setting or the first toggle is just laser, and that's moving the toggle all the way over to the left. As you can see, we've got now got just the laser. The second setting, moving the toggle to the center, is laser and flashlight. I have to get a good shot of that, laser and flashlight, there you can see. And then the third setting, all the way to the right, is flashlight only. So those are the three settings. Now the difference between um, the normal PL2 and the PL2 RL, besides the laser, is that the PL2, standard PL2, is one setting only, which is 1200 lumens, and then you also get, by pressing both sides, a strobe mode. The PL2 RL, same situation, pressing on both sides activates strobe. Now, strobe will work with the laser, depending on whichever side you have the toggle on, but also, with the RL, if you double tap, it drops to 400 lumen mode. So you get that for a bit of a, like an extended period, or if you don't want to go too crazy on the lumens. So dub, and it'll work in any mode except obviously laser only. So that's quite cool. Double tap 400, double tap 1200. Another small difference over the standard PL2 is the locking mechanism. Now both will mount onto your standard Glock rail or Picatinny rail, whatever the case may be. But on the standard PL2, you just have the normal quick release toggle as you see there just flips open but on the PL2 RL you've got the normal quick release clip but you can also open it wider for easier access or to put it onto your rail much easier so you've got that little bit of um, adjustment there where you can slide it open clamp it onto your rail and then clamp it on as per usual and then at the bottom on the laser you've got two sort of allen wrench style screws you do get the allen wrench with it one over there and another one over there. That is simply to adjust the height and left and right of the laser so you can obviously line it up with your gun sights. Guys, in the range video, I did try to bring you the best shots of the laser, but it was such a bright day that I couldn't pick up the red dot on the camera. I could see it myself visually, but it was just a waste for me to be aiming the camera at the targets with a red dot because you, I, I just couldn't find it on the camera. It would have, would have been wasted footage. I do shoot in a way that will show you that I am using the laser. So just bear with me, I was using the laser and um, let's have a look at the video. So we are at the Shukakai Sport Shooting Club uh, shooting range. So I'm gonna be doing some pistol and some Ronnie shooting. I'm gonna be shooting through the sights and comparing it to how I feel and what it's like to shoot with a laser, how quickly I can acquire the target and how accurately I can tune this guy in. It's super bright out here today, so I might not be able to show you the laser with the light on, but we'll do our best, so let's have a look. So guys, what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to use the Bushnell scope on my uh, micro Ronnie. I've got two targets set up in front of me. I'm going to be shooting the left target first three shots. Then I'm going to sweep it to the right and shoot the right target three shots. My aim here is to get good, accurate shots. Then I'm going to compare that to what I can do with, with the laser. So let's have a look. Okay guys, so the first target on the left, I got a pretty good grouping all inside the A zone. I think my second shot was pulled a bit to the left. Not too disappointed with that. I'm, I am able to pick up the target quite quite quickly obviously using a red dot is like looking through a window with a red dot painted on it you can you can see your target quite, quite quickly and tracking it across wasn't too bad let's have a look at the other one 
So I, I kind of got my mojo in a bit more, uh, kind of into the groove a bit better here. I've gotten all three shots uh, within a bit more than the joint of a finger. Sweeping it across wasn't bad. I found I swept it a slightly bit further than where I wanted to go and then pulled it back. But again, that comes to training and, and, and um, how often you are shooting these, these weapon systems. Remember, I'm the everyday guy, so this is just normal guy shooting type thing. I'm not spec ops or anything like that. So let's see what I can do with the laser and... Um, We'll see if I can if I can replicate the results. Guys, next I'm gonna try the laser. Now I'm gonna completely negate the use of the scope by turning my gun sideways, sort of full John Wick mode. That's just the best way I figured to do it because when I try to do it with a scope, I tend to find myself looking through the scope anywhere. It's just a force of habit. So I'm gonna be turning the gun sideways. I'm not recommending you shoot like that. Just stay calm, um, not trying to be cool. I just wanna use the laser alone and nothing else so let's have a look it's going to be three shots and target on the left three shots and target on the right as quickly and as accurately as i can here we go okay guys so that was literally the first time i'd ever shot with a laser and i'm very impressed the thing with with using the laser and completely negating the use of a sight okay is you are able to look at the target all the time I'm, I'm very happy with the grouping straight off the bat. I was aiming dead center, but I could sort of see the laser move. And once I was back in the A zone is when I pulled the trigger. So my feeling on that is, let, let's go have a look at the other one. Pretty much same thing. Uh, fairly decent grouping there. I th this was my first, and I think this was the double tap towards the end because I could just pick that laser up so quickly because, like I said, I'm not looking through sights. I'm looking at the target, and there's a red dot painted on that target. So all I have to do is want to see the dot is where I want it, squeeze the trigger, and if you set it up correctly, the bullet's going to go where you want it. So the laser on the light is definitely a functional tool. It is something that, that, that can be used, especially if you're not a... a a trained shooter, typical example is if it's a home invasion and, and you are the shooter in the house and you go down, your wife can pick up that gun, put the dot on the bad guy, pull the trigger, and if you set it up correctly, which you should, you're going to get decent shots on target. Like I said, this is my result after the very, very first time I've ever shot this laser, and, and I'm, I'm more than impressed. Let's see what I can do with a pistol and see if I can replicate these results. So guys, I'm going to replicate the test now with, with a pistol. First round is going to be using my normal sights. I don't unfortunately have a holster for this for this light yet, a uh, light laser combination yet. So I will invest in one of those shortly. So we're just going to have to shoot uh, from open and see what's what. Let's go for it. Okay, so. Um, Tight grouping a bit to the left. I think this was first and second shot and third shot went a bit wide. But that is effectively where I am with my sights. Let's have a look at the other one. So this is going to give you a bit of an indication of what happens when you sweep across to the right. This was my first shot, I think, and then I made an adjustment and I got the second two shots in the A zone. Now my, my zone or the, when I'm pulling the trigger is when I feel like my target, or sorry, when I feel like my sights is in the A zone. I'm not going for a specific spot on the A zone. Obviously the closer the grouping the better, but um, my, my target is the A zone. Um, not too bad, not too great either, I have to be honest. Let's see what I can do with the laser, how it affects my shooting and we'll go further from there. Same test using just the laser. I'm going to do my best to not look through the sights. I may turn the gun slightly just to eliminate them if I feel like I am sort of using them, but I'm trying my best to not use the sights and only look at the target and where the laser is, sweep it across, shoot the second target and see what we achieve. Okay, let's have a look. Okay guys, so where we are with just the laser, and I do want to stress this laser, moves around a lot it's 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 quite a sensitive thing so when i was shooting with a ronnie i had good control because i did four points of contact with the laser on the pistol you really get a feeling for how how much you move when you pull the trigger so we've got i think this was first shot second shot and third shot not excited about that over there we'll have to do some more work that's where we are on that target when i swept it across to the right i think this was my first shot and then I made an adjustment. I took a, a second to breathe and, and sort of gather myself. The cool thing is it is going where the laser is pointing, which is really cool. 
It's just me having to do some more work with it and, and get better trigger control because at the end of the day, trigger control is one of the main factors to accuracy. But um, that's where I am right now. I'm not saying you should be. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. That's the evolution of my training. So uh, let's go from here. Final thoughts on the, I would say, shootability maybe is a nice word to use for the Olight PL2RL Balder, the one with the laser. On the Ronnie, I found it to be very useful because you've got way more control. You've got four points of control in the Ronnie, with, whereas with a pistol, you effectively have your two hands. So it was a bit more difficult for me to, to control the laser. Now, there's no sensitivity setting on this laser, so it's like there's no dumb down setting. Um, if you tremble even slightly, the laser's gonna move. Now, the advantage of it is it's really good for dry firing. Because when you dry fire, you can see very clearly with what the laser is doing, whether you're pulling the trigger, whether you're raising it, lowering it, pushing over to the left, pushing over to the right. So that's really cool for training purposes. Is the laser a functional option on, on the Olight? Absolutely. It makes target acquisition very, very easy because kind of all you have to do is put the red dot on uh, the threat and you are good to go. And also it allows for someone who's not overly uh, akin to sight alignment to be able to negate that, that, that training skill and just put the red dot on the, the threat. So there is definitely a function for it. It's definitely a useful tool, especially if you do put it on a Ronnie. I would more than likely run this on, on my Ronnie, but I am going to try to get the answer for this. I am going to try to EDC it for a while, see what it's like. I currently EDC the PL2, which I fortunately got in Desert 10 in a quantum carrier also. I'm doing an also review soon, or may have done it by the time this video is released. So it's definitely an option that can be looked at. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys soon for another review. Have a good week. Cheers. God bless.